no one will care for you like your parents will care for you. At Annur Education Center, we give orphans a loving home, clothing, food, and education. Be the orphan's parent by sponsoring an orphan for 18,000 Rand or 1,500 Rand per month. Annur Education Center, a place where orphans call home. Imagine, imagine a world where each person has access to their basic rights. A world where everyone is equal. Imagine a world where each person will have an equal share in each single seed of wheat. Where each child has the freedom to learn. This Ramadan, we ask you to feed the fasting in 14 countries around the world with AMA. Provide an iftar box for 100 rand, a hamper for 1,500 rand, or feed a village for 15,000 rand. Donate today at Africa Muslims Agency and imagine the difference you can make. Before we go live, as Amal said, Kaifi is right. Kaifi, but the IT keep light with you, And sometimes it's like, nah, the program, I keep it at some of this, but it's just to get a glimpse. It's like, I already mean, some IT keep light, you Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa ashabi wa barik wa sallim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli bihaqqi habibina wa Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bibarakati subahana rabbika rabbil aizati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen my dear respected elders, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters and children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our third and last Hajj class for this year of 2022. And before I start, let us just to create some spiritual vibe here, let's just join me in a short salawat on the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inshallah. Even if you don't know the words, just hum along with the tune of the lago, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma Salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Al-Subh bada min tala'ati Wal-Layl daja min wafratihi Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Jibreel ata Laylat asara Warrab da'a Li hadratihi Allahumma Salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma Salli ala 
Sayyidina Fa Muhammaduna Huwa Sayyiduna Fal'izzu lana Li ijabatihi Allahumma Salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma Salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Bismillahirrahmanirrahim we begin in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All thanks and praise and glory belong to Allah alone. And we ask Allah to send His choicest blessings and eternal salams on all His revered prophets, but most especially on our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his family and his noble Sahaba. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. Today is our third lesson and also the last lesson and so far we have discussed the shurut of the Hajj which means the requirements that a person must meet those requirements in order for Hajj to become furled upon you. We have also discussed the Arkan of the Hajj, named the Arkan of the Hajj and we have done and discussed the state of a haram, how to go into the state of a haram, and how important the state of a haram is. Last week we have also discussed our journey leaving Makkah and go spend the first day of Hajj, which is the eighth day of Dil Hijjah, on the plain of Mina. And I said there we spend the whole day we make the five salah on its time and the salah that consists of four rakaats become two rakaats. Then we also discuss the greatness of Arafah. How on the next day, which is the ninth of the Hijjah and the second day of Hajj, which is the greatest, holiest day of the year, the day of Arafah, where Allah makes Arafah the capital of the entire universe. And there on Arafah, Allah washes you clean from all your sins. And from Arafah, you live like a newborn baby as if your mother has just given birth to you. And then I ended off last week by explaining you that when Maghrib Salah come in, we do not make Maghrib on Arafah. We leave Arafah, as Allah say, وَإِذَا أَفَدْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتِ فَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ عِنْدَ الْمَشْعَرِ الْحَرَامِ And when you flow from Arafah, and I explained to you the significance, that ayah is proof that Allah forgive every haji standing on Arafah, because Allah say when you flow from Arafah like pure water, then you stop at Musdalifa. There you remember Allah by making your Maghrib first, and then you bring Ishai with Maghrib, two rakaats, and then you make Maghrib and Ishai together on Musdalifa. There on Musdalifa, you also collect your certain amount of pebbles, which I explained to you, either 49 or 73 pebbles. It depends on the number of days that you are going to pelt the Jamarat. So once you have made your Maghrib and Ishai, you collect your pebbles on Musdalifa, there you sit and you rest. You rest and you wait till the time that you are going to leave Musdalifa. And as I explained to you, that most people who follow the Shafi Madhab, they leave approximately after midnight, they leave from Musdalifa and they go to Mina. Those who follow the Hanafi Madhab, they stay there on Musdalifa, they make Fajr Salah, and only after Fajr, they will leave Musdalifa and go to Mina. And that's where we have stopped 
last week. Now you leave Musdalifa and you'll come across a board where it shows you Mus Musdalifa ends here and Mina starts here. So the boards are always there indicating to you where Arafah starts, where Arafah ends. Where Musdalifa start, where Musdalifa end. Where Mina start, where Mina ends. This big notice boards that show you like the boards we have on the highway on the N1 showing you this place and that place. There also it shows you exactly where Arafah is, where Musdalifa is and where Mina is. So now we walk to Mina and this is the time that you need your strength because you are very very tired and there's not always buses Sometimes the bus bring you from Musdalifa, from Arafah to Musdalifa, and then you stay on Musdalifa, then that same bus go back and fetch other hujaj also on Arafah and bring them also to Musdalifa. So you're not always guaranteed that you have a bus from Musdalifa. And basically it is another hour walking from Musdalifa towards Mina. And now as we come on to Mina, we now go to where the Jamarat is. There's three Jamarat. At first the Jamarat used to be just a pillar. And people used to pell the pillar and you know, you always used to come out there with knocks and marks because the pillar was this size and someone standing here who can't see so well, throw, but they don't throw rock. Right? They miss the spot. So you standing on that side, they throwing you as if you were a Jamarat. Now, Alhamdulillah, the Jamarat have been changed as three massive walls. The first is one wall. Further on you walk, you get the second wall and the third wall on the further on, which is called Jamaratul Ula, the first Jamarat, Jamaratul Wusta, the second Jamarat, and Jamaratul Aqaba, the big Jamarat. Now listen carefully, people. We are still saying as we walk, we are still saying, Labaik Allahumma Labaik, Labaik la sharika laka Labaik, Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, La sharika lak. We are still with our labaik. Now we come on to Mina. We go past the first Jamarat. We carry on, we go past the second Jamarat. And we stop at the last one, the third one. Then we have seven pebbles. And we make our niya, Bismillah, I'm throwing Jamaratul Aqaba only according to the way that the Prophet Sallallahu taught us. And this is now the morning, basically, of La Barang Haji, Bakari Eid. So now we pass the first Jamarat, we pass the second Jamarat, we stop at the third Jamarat, we take seven pebbles, and we keep, it is sunnah to keep the pebble in between your thumb and your tahiyat finger pebble between your thumb and your tahya, your index finger, and you say, Bismillah Allahu Akbar, and you throw. Bismillah Allahu Akbar, and you throw all seven pebbles. So seven pebbles you throw that time, when you come from Musdalifa onto Mina, you throw seven pebbles only at Jamaratul Aqaba, the third one. You don't throw the first two. People want to know how come how come we don't throw the first and the second Jamarat? Because this is how the Prophet taught us. And it is also to show the first two. Can you see what we're doing with the big one? We're coming for you two tomorrow. <laughs> right? So in preparation. So there you throw the big one only with seven pebbles. Then you can make a short dua, Allah must accept, and then immediately, people, I will encourage you. Immediately, don't waste time if you have a little group, 
immediately get a taxi, the nearest taxi, and go to the haram for your tawaf. Now that you have thrown this jamaratul aqaba, now you are allowed to take this, the, the minor release from ihram. Meaning the moment you throw, finish throwing the seven pebbles, you ask someone who's not in ihram, there will be quite a few barbers or sabi standing around there, someone who is not in ihram to just clip some hair to take you out of ihram. Please, you cannot clip your own hair. You cannot take yourself out of ihram. Someone who is not in ihram must just clip your hair, take you out of ihram, and then you as the man can do it for your wife or for the ladies that you are mahram for. Then immediately, then you have the option to either stand one side quickly, take off your ihram clothing, the men, your two seamless clothing, and then you can jump into a, a top a little abaya or a short collar, a short, short sleeve top. So then immediately get your taxi and go to the haram. Because the majority of people are still on Musdalifa. And the majority of people are still coming on towards Mina. So the sooner you can get to the haram to make your tawaf, the better for you. Because then you don't find such a full packed haram and you can make your tawaf nicely. Because that is one tawaf, if that haram is full, it is one tawaf that you can perform without your feet touching the ground. It becomes so congested and so tight that the crowd moves you around the Kaaba. You can hardly move. So the sooner you can get to the haram to perform your tawaful ifada, some it's called tawaful ifada, some call it tawaful hajj, and some call it tawaful ziyara, whatever. But it is a tawaful ifada. If you can't remember that word, just remember it's a tawaf of the hajj. And if you lost your group and there's no one who can lead you in the tawaf, don't panic. Because by that time you would know how to make your tawaf already. All you do, you go to the point where, because uh, the Kaaba is a square building, and there's one section where the Hajar al-Aswad is. That is the starting point of your tawaf and your ending point. Where you start your tawaf at Hajar al-Aswad, there also you end off at Hajar al-Aswad. And you always see there's a green light on the one side of the wall that shows you that you are now in line with the Hajar al-Aswad. So there, if, even if you can't, if you're alone, don't panic. You don't have to say your niyat in Arabic. You can say your niya in your mind and softly in English or Afrikaans. Just say, Oh Allah, I make niya to perform my tawaf of the hajj. Accept it from me and make it easy. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Now you can either kiss the hajar al-aswad if you can. If you can't reach there, just touch it. Or even if you have a stick, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, touch it with a stick with his walking stick. And if you cannot reach there, you can stand at a distance and make istilam towards Hajar al-Aswad. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, walillah, alhamd. And then you start your tawaf. Tawaf consists of seven rounds of walking around the Kaaba. For the men, it is sunnah, because if you still have your ihram over your shoulder, it is sunnah for the first three rounds to have it under your, over your left shoulder, but underneath your right armpit. Once you start your fourth round, you bring it back. That is wisdom in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us like that. If you can, if you can't, 
Bismillah. You walk seven rounds around the Kaaba. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he made tawaf of the Kaaba, he read sometimes a third kalima. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla, wa la quwata, illa billahi al-ali al-azim. So all seven rounds that you walk around the Kaaba, you can read that dhikr. Or you can start your tawaf and throughout the seven rounds, even if you don't read anything, you talk to Allah in English Afrikaans, your tawaf is still right. And wallahi, I love to make my tawaf in Afrikaans. Really. Because Afrikaans is my mother tongue. I grew up with Afrikaans. I still dream in Afrikaans at night. And when people used to make me angry, I used to swear in Afrikaans. But now I don't swear anymore. I became a good boy, alhamdulillah. What I'm trying to relate to you and to convey to you, talk to Allah. That is now your me time with Allah. That is you are walking, making tawaf, walking around the house of Allah because we don't worship the Kaaba, we worship the Lord of the Kaaba. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ Worship the Lord of the Kaaba. What better time to walk around the house of Allah, the Kaaba to Sharif, and talk to Allah in the language of your heart. Talk to Allah now in your tawaf about your parents, whether your parents are alive or whether they are deceased. Talk to Allah about your parents, how Allah must favor them and grant them the highest place of Jannah. Talk to Allah about your parents. This is what I normally do. I don't say you must do it. I'm just giving you a clue. In my first round around the Kaaba, I always talk to Allah about my two parents. Second round, I talk to Allah about my wife about my children. Third round, I talk to Allah about my family, my brothers, my sisters. Fourth round, I talk to Allah about my friends and all those people who came to visit me, all those people who asked me to make dua for them, how Allah must accept whatever they need. Fifth round, I talk to Allah about all my friends. Sixth round, I talk to Allah about life. What I want, what I need, Allah must help. The seventh round, I said, Ya Allah, for a couple of years now, I was driving Toyota. <laughs> Allah, I would like to drive Mercedes. And when I came back, I got a Mercedes. <laughs> now, just, just a lighter moment, just light moments, because you don't need to be so holy goly only, you know. What I'm trying to convey to you, talk to Allah. Ask Allah about your halal needs. Halal needs. Ask Allah about halal things, permissible things. We never make dua and pray and ask Allah for any haram things. Never. But what I'm conveying to you is tawaf, is that moment that Allah is giving you because Allah has taken you all these thousands of miles traveling thousands of miles spending thousands of rands leaving behind your family your friends and your comforts at home and Allah has brought you to Arafah and now Allah say I wash you clean and in this clean state I bring you to my house my Kaaba, now you can talk to me and you can converse with me. This is how you perform your tawaf. I always encourage people, don't walk around the Kaaba with kitabs and scream out to us that you don't understand. There's nothing wrong with it. But why do you want to lose the moment? Why do you want to lose that moment that Allah has brought you here because Allah is the one who calls you for Hajj, no one else. And there's a reason why Allah bring you for Hajj, but you have to discover that reason and purpose why Allah has brought you. 
So use every tawaf. Just talk to Allah. Talk your heart out to Allah. Ask Allah your needs from the bottom of your heart. And that is how you will then enjoy your tawaf. So this is your tawaf of the hajj, which is part of your hajj. If you leave out this tawaf, your hajj is incomplete. Now that you have made your tawaf, try to drink some zamzam water, which is sunnah. And when you drink some of the zamzam water, what I always do, the group that is with me, I always make sure that everyone have their zamzam water. I ask the men, everyone to take two cups and give one cup to your wife or one cup to your daughter or any of the ladies. And then you fetch another cup for yourself. And once you all have a cup of zamzam, we face the Kaaba and then we say the dua together. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'a wa rizqan wasi'a wa shifa'an min kulli da. Meaning, O oh Allah, I ask you ilman nafi'a through the barakah of the zamzam water Grant me beneficial knowledge. Wa rizqan wasi'a And through the barakah of the zamzam of Allah, grant me an increase in my sustenance and my rizq. Wa shifa'an min kulli da. And O oh Allah, grant me through the barakah of the zamzam, shifa, healing and cure from all sickness and disease. And always remember the Nabi alayhi salam teaches us ma zamzam lima shuribalahu that zamzam water should be drank for a particular purpose and it is drank for the purpose that it is meant for. So if you make this near, Allah accept. Allah will grant you through the baraka because this zamzam is sacred water the zamzam is blessed water the zamzam is like any other water is unlike any other water there's no water like the zamzam water because it is that zamzam when baby ismail alayhi salam was crying how allah told jibreel to touch that part of the earth with his wing and zoom zoom the water gushed out up till today, that same zamzam that gushed forward through the dua and the cries of a mother, baby Hajira, and the cries of baby Ismail, that same zamzam is quenching the thirst of millions of people every single day. And the zamzam never dries up. This is the miracle of the zamzam. So after your tawaf of your hajj, tawaful hajj, face the Kaaba, standing. Always the Nabi teaches us that when you eat and drink, then sit down. But when you drink the Zamzam, it is Sunnah to stand facing the Kaaba or facing the Qibla and drink some Zamzam. Allah A'lam, Allah knows best the wisdom in that which the Prophet wasallam taught us. Now you finish, drink your Zamzam, and off you go to this Mas'a. Mas'a is the place because between Safa and Marwa. Safa is a hill, Marwa is another hill. Nowadays, you don't have to run in the desert sand. Like Bibi Hajira alayhi salam used to run in the hot desert sand with no roof covering. Nowadays, the place where we make our side between Safa and Marwa are tiled. You have a ground floor, you have a first floor, you have another floor, and you can make your side on the roof as well. And I simply love to make my side on the roof, especially that early morning because of the cool weather, and you also are under the stars. So your side, watch carefully, your sai starts here at this point, which is called Safa. Safa. And you walk down to the other point, which is called Marwa. So the sai takes place between Safa and Marwa. So, listen carefully. You start your sai here. 
You make your niya, O oh Allah, I now make my sa'i for hajj. If you don't know it in Arabic, and there's no one who can repeat it for you in Arabic, you can say it English or Afrikaans. O oh Allah, I make niya to make my sa'i of the hajj. Bismillah. And you walk. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Lahu al-mulku wa lahu alhamdu yuhi wa yumit wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. There's other du'as that you can also read. But even if you just walk, even if you say nothing, your sa'i is still correct. All you need to do is you need to walk from Safa to Marwa. That's one. From Marwa back to Safa is two. From Safa to Marwa, three. From Marwa to Safa, four. From Safa to Marwa, five. From Marwa to Safa, six. From Safa to Marwa, seven. So up and down, up and down, seven walks, up and down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So which means easy to remember, your sa'i starts at Safa, but the seventh one, it ends at Marwa. Now you've done the other rukun of the Hajj, according to Imam Shafi, rahmatullahi, the sa'i is a rukun of your Hajj, now you finish your sa'i. You finish off at Marwa, and there at Marwa you'll find also barbers, if you have not released yourself yet. If you have done the clipping already, then by finishing your sai, you are now finished, you are totally released from ihram. But if you have not released yourself yet, then you can ask someone again who is not in ihram to kindly clip your hair to take you out of ihram, which is also the clipping of the hair or the shaving of the hair for the men is also a rukun of the hajj. The men, we can just clip some hair to get out of ihram. Afterwards, if you wish, you can go to the barber and have your hair shaven. Women don't shave the hair. Never. Unless it's for a medical reason or a medical purpose, like people who's got leukemia or some cancer, and then the hair gets shaven. Just permissible for that person. And I just want to add that sometimes our people become so emotional when a person has leukemia or cancer and the hair must be shaven. So now we want to show that person support and some ladies shave their hair also in support of that person. It's not permissible. The thing that you need to do for such a person is dua and good advice. You don't shave your hair. The man it is sunnah, the Nabi alayhi salam said, Oh Allah, Bless those men, those pilgrims who shave their hair. And, and then the Nabi said the second time, O oh Allah, bless those who shave their hair. And some people ask, Ya Rasulullah, and what about those people who just clip their hair? And then the third time the Nabi again say, Bless Allah, bless those people who shave their hair. And again they ask, Ya Rasulullah, what about those who don't shave their hair? They only clip their hair. And then the Prophet said, May Allah bless those who clip their hair as well. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for those who shave their hair and the Nabi made dua for those who clip their hair as well. So we shouldn't indulge in the arguments and say, How do you perform your hajj? Why didn't you shave your hair? There's no need for arguments. There's no need for debates. So the women also, when your hair gets clipped to come out of haram, you only have your hair clipped a fingertip size. Just a little bit. Fingertip. Those who've got fingers, you'll see from the top till the first line there, that's a fingertip. Fingertip. Clip and you're out of your haram. The men either clip your hair or you shave your hair, whatever your decision is. 
It is in your heart. If you can have your hair shaven, very good, because the Nabi made three times dua for those who shave the hair. But the Nabi also made dua for those who clip the hair. And everyone must don't look nice with the bless also. So people have the personal... You see how easy Islam is? How flexible Islam is? Islam don't make hard and fast rules. I mean, how would Stephen Seagal look with a bless? But you know Stephen Seagal, no? No? Okay, you don't know him. So you can either clip your hair or shave your hair. Now all your arkan of hajj is now complete. You've been in Ihram, you've been to Arafah, you've made your tawaful ifada, you've made your sa'i, you've, you've made your sa'i, you've made your halq, which means the clipping or the shaving of the hair, and you did it according to Imam Shafi with that tartib. Tartib means that sequence there your six arkan is complete. Now you have done your hajj, you are now a haji. You're a haji, mashallah. A hajj or a hajja, you have performed your hajj. Now you wait for your time that you will have to leave Makkah back home. No, no, now you've completed. Now it is a day of Eid. On that day, you are so tired. You're tired. You completed your hajj now. You're tired. It's a day of Labarang Haji. It's a day now that you really must keep down. Now many people phone home and they say slama to their families and they cry over the phone and the families tell them hajj magbul, hajj mabarur and they leave. And so they leave. They leave their people in Cape Town. In fact, they contacting the people in Cape Town saying Slamat and they cry. And the family think, wow, our Khujaj are so emotional. They're crying. But I found out the reason why the Hajis cry at that time because when they speak to their family over the phone, they can hear the oven opening. The pies are taken out. The soap flesh and bread is taken out. pies. <laughs> but it's a, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very emotional moment. It's an emotional moment because you have so much joy in having performed your hajj and you've got so much to share and your loved ones are at a distance, they are waiting for you to come home. And to believe you me, you don't even know it's La Barang Haji. That's why I don't understand why our people here fight and I say it with the greatest respect and I don't want to go into the arena of debate and argumentation. All I'm saying is, I can't, me personally, maybe it's because of my limited knowledge or my short-sightedness, but I can't understand why we fight to have Eid with the people of Makkah and our people, many of our people, sleep that whole day nearly because they don't even realize it's Makkah, it's, it's Eid. It's Labarang. Only when you wake up and you realize, now the Hujjah starts saying slama to each other. Now they take out the, the Dayton walnut cakes and the fruit cakes, which they put aside to keep for Labarang. And everyone now is trying to say slama and share the cakes and the whatever they have with each other. But that spirit of Eid here in Cape Town is not there. You've got your Hajjahs. You've got your Hajj. So now this day of Eid is a day of rest. Now the following three days after the day of Labarang Haji, that is called Ayyamu Tashriq. That is the three, two days or three days that we are now going to pelt all three Jamarats. And I want you to follow me and listen carefully. The day 
la barang haji goes by so try to be back in your camp on mina by maghrib by maghrib la barang evening eid evening be back in your camp on mina because great sunnah muakkada and great Advice of the Prophet Sallallahu of his teachings is that we must make mabit on Mina. We must spend the night or part of the night on Mina. Because the next day after La Barang Haji, it is now the first day of Tashrik. Now comes the pelting. Now on this day, the first day of Tashrik, we will have to pelt all three jamarats. And again, people, please don't get into any fighting. Don't get into argumentation. You will find people who already go and throw after Fajr. Don't fight with people. Don't argue. Don't debate. What does our Prophet teach us? We learn from the teachings and the manasik of the Prophet wasallam that all four madhabs, Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, all four madhabs agree that the time of pelting starts at zawal time. Please, it starts at zawal time. Now there was a time when things were not so organized in Mina and we know there were trampling of people to death because it wasn't properly monitored and controlled because people who used to finish pelting used to come back and clash with those who were still coming on. There was this constant clashing with the result that people were trampled to death and many people got injured. Now, alhamdulillah, this beautiful monitoring that I must salute the ministry of Hajj who organized this so well now that when you come on to go and greet, uh, when you go to pel the Jamarat, you go one way and right through the other way. There's no coming back. So there's no clashing with each other. It is very well structured and very well monitored and organized. So that time, because it wasn't so organized, some ulama did give the concession to the hujaj that they can throw even after Fajr, before the time, just that they can be the saving and the securing of life and the welfare of people. But now, alhamdulillah, everything goes smooth. And the ministry of Hajj even give different countries they allocate the times to go and throw the Jamarat. So everything is well structured. Don't follow people who tell you, just follow me, man. Let's do this and do then and forget everything that you were taught. Follow your heart. If you feel comfortable with the Sheikh or the Imam or the Mawlana whom you learn by, and they give you the certain knowledge and you're comfortable with that, stick to the knowledge that you will find rest and peace of heart. Also take into consideration, especially men, if you have your wife with you or you have your mothers or women folk with you, don't take your women in at a time when it is very full. Because pelting starts at Zawal time. If it is still too full for you to go that time, you wait for after Dhuwar. If it is still too full, wait for after Asr. If it is still too full, wait for after Maghrib. Wait for a time that it is safe for you and those who depend on you. Because the pelting time is from Zawal time even till the next morning before Fajr. So there's no reason for us at all to go put our lives in any danger. The deen is easy. Always remember that. Always remember. 
Anyone who makes the deen hard for you, that person doesn't know the deen. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Ad-deenu yusr, that the deen of Islam is very easy. But it only becomes difficult upon those who make it difficult upon themselves. I've seen over the years that Allah has taken me to serve the hujaj. Our people are stubborn. People agree with you now, later on they meet friends who tell them, come let's do this, then forget about the nasiha and the advice that the imam give them. And so I've seen on many occasions, wallahi, how men take their wives by the hand, force her to go with him into the thick crowd, and then halfway they find out they can't anymore. They come back and the poor woman's eyes look like it want to shock out of a socket. And I tell the men, if you want to get rid of your wife, don't do it here. Your duty is to look after your wife. And your duty as women is to care for your husband and support him and be with him. Please don't put each other's lives in danger. So now on this day, you will stop when you go pelt at the first jamarat, Bismillah Allahu Akbar, and you throw it with seven pebbles. You walk further, you come to the second jamarat, which is the second wall. There again, seven pebbles, Bismillah Allahu Akbar, Bismillah Allahu Akbar. And you walk further, third jamarat, jamarat al-aqaba, there again, seven pebbles, Bismillah Allahu Akbar. So that day, you pelt seven each, which gives you a total of 21 pebbles. And also, people, Go at the time that is allocated for you, that you don't have to fear anything. Don't stand at a distance and the wall is there. No, the way we take in our people, alhamdulillah, we take them in, take a curve, take our people right to the, in front of the wall where they can throw to the best of their ability. Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Don't freeze up, don't fear, don't let all those horror stories that you heard before make you to freeze. Put your trust in Allah. Be with your husband. Be with your wife. Stay with your group. Your group gives you that necessary shielding of protection and security. So once we throw the first one, we move on to the second one. Throw the second one with seven pebbles. Then we make a very short du'a and then we stop at the third one where we throw seven pebbles and there we don't make du'a. You only make du'a after the second jamarat. Please bear that in mind. And there's no time for you really to stand long and make long du'as because the asgaris, the police there, they will chase you on. Because you can't stand and be an obstruction for the people that's still coming on. So stick with your group and your group leader will facilitate for you what is best to do. Now you've thrown all three jamarats and again as salah time come in, you make every salah on its time, dhuar, two raka'ats, asr, two raka'ats, isha, two raka'ats. You'll have your lunch on Mina, you'll have your supper on Mina. Don't indulge in nonsensical talking. Talk to each other good things or sit with your Quran because you are still in the process of your Hajj journey. So now rest. The following day comes in, the second day of Tashriq. Again, the time of Zawal come in or the time that you're allocated to go and throw and pelt the Jamarat, you again go to the first Jamarat, Bismillah Allahu Akbar. Bismillah Allahu Akbar, seven uh, pebbles at the first Jamarat. Then you move on to the second Jamarat, seven pebbles, Bismillah Allahu Akbar. And then you should make a very short dua, you go to the third Jamarat, seven pebbles and you leave and you go back to your camp 
now you are finished second day you have now the option you can either stay on Mina and throw the next day also or you can leave Mina but as soon as you finish if you want to leave get your bags together whatever you need to and leave Mina immediately now you hajj and whatever you need to do is basically finish those who stay on Mina they will throw the next day again all three Jamarahs and Allah give you that concession Allah say whoever wants to do two days and then leave there's no blame on you and whoever wants to stay and pelt three days there's also no blame on you and Allah love those who do good so the choice is yours the choice is yours and for a couple of years I've encouraged my hujaj to stay with me on Mina and pal the third day also because it's nothing, nothing you're really going to go do there wherever you are whether you're in Azizia or whether you are full stay in Makkah there's nothing for you to do so you might as well stay and do the third day pelting as well if you so wish and you still have the strength but it is not a farud or compulsory duty upon you now alhamdulillah we have done everything we have pelted the jamarat either two days or three days whatever we could now we're waiting to go back home now the last thing you should do before you leave back for home is Tawaful Wida. Tawaful Wida means the farewell Tawaf. And that is a very, very, very emotional Tawaf. You make Tawaf around the Kaaba and most of the time you will see people crying like babies as if there's no one. They don't even concern who is with them or see them they just cry like babies asking Allah oh Allah forgive me if I did not do justice to this journey and oh Allah I ask you as I bid farewell to the Kaaba now with this tawaful wida oh Allah I ask you to grant me the honor to come back and make another umrah or another hajj with my family that is the tawaful wida, which is a sunnah mu'akkada. If you just leave it out without any reason, then you must pay a dam. Paying a dam means slaughtering a sheep or slaughtering a goat. Now, before even this question come up, let me explain it to you. The lady, and I touched on this last week and the question came up. The lady who's got a khid and she must still do her tawaf of the hajj, not the last one with her, the farewell, she must still do the tawaf of the hajj, but she must leave tomorrow morning and the plane isn't going to wait for her. She must now, what she must do, she must clean herself up, make a proper istinja, pad herself up, make wudu, and go into the haram and make your tawaful hajj. Your main tawaf of the hajj. Because tawaful wida, if you have your khayd and you need to leave, tawaful wida falls away from you. You don't have to make tawaful wida if you have your khayd. But tawaful hajj is part of the hajj, you must do it. So now you have your khayd, and the plane is going to leave so only in this instance the woman is allowed to make tawaf of the hajj while she has a khayd because the plane is not going to wait for you so the lady will go in she will make a tawaf of the hajj which she must do she can also do her sigh and come out and a hajj is done so the lady who's got a khayd, she can do a hajj tawaf if her plane is going to leave, but if she still has a khayd and she must make tawaful wida, the farewell tawaf, where we bid farewell to the Kaaba, then that tawaf will fall away from you. And now you come home, and now it is your duty 
to protect your hajj and to look after your hajj. And I encourage every single haji that remember as you come back, the Prophet say, the moment you step out of your home to go for hajj, you are walking on the wings of the malaika. A million times more greater than a person who gets red carpet treatment. If we walk on red carpet, we're going to tell everyone I had red carpet treatment, royal treatment. But can you imagine walking on the angels' wings? The malaika are carrying us. They are making dua for us. Your dua is accepted until you come back home. That is why we tell the hujaj that the malaika are now, as you come home, they embrace you, they shake hands with you, and they say, may Allah forgive you, O hujaj, and may Allah accept your hajj. That is why we encourage hujaj. And we encourage families, when your families come back from hajj, don't rush to go and look for an imam or a sheikh or a maulana to come and make dua that the hujaj must go in the house. By the front gate, before the hujaj come in, ask the haji to make a dua. And no haji can tell me they can't make dua. You have then made dua on your whole journey. And you don't have to make dua in Arabic. You can lift your hands and read Surah Fatiha. And then you say in your own language, English Africans, Oh Allah, accept my hajj. Oh Allah, forgive all these people who are here, oh Allah, who have come to greet me. Because the Nabi made dua and the Nabi said, Allahumma ghfir lil hajj wa liman istaghfar lahum al hujaj. Oh Allah, forgive every single haji who perform hajj and oh Allah, uh, forgive everyone whom the haji make istighfar for. If the Nabi say that Allah must forgive the haji and the one that the haji make istighfar for, ask the hujaj to make dua. Make dua, there's nothing wrong in making dua in English. In making dua in Afrikaans. And talk to Allah, shukriya Allah for bringing me safe home. Grant me and all the hujaj, a hajj makbul and a hajj mabrur. Oh Allah, bless my family and friends who stand here. And oh Allah, take them also on this beautiful, holy journey that they can experience what I have experienced. Make dua. Let the haji make dua. I go, when people ask me to come and make dua, I go till there, I make a very short dua, but then I tell the hujaj, now you make dua also, because your dua is much more important than the dua of the imam now. Because you are sinless. The imam is a clumsona. You are a haji now, you are sinless. You are the guest of Allah and you are Allah's guest until you put your foot back into your home. That's why we ask you to make dua at your front gate before you come in. And the moment you enter your home, you put your right foot in and you say, Bismillah. Now, Alhamdulillah, you are safe and sound back home. And we pray that Allah keep his hand of mercy over all our hujaj. I know some of our hujaj are leaving in this week already. May Allah keep his hand of rahmah and mercy and protection over all the hujaj. Amen. May Allah grant you all a safe journey. May Allah keep you all in his protection. And may Allah most of all grant you hajj makbul and a hajj mabarur. Amen. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? See, now there's no more questions because I already answered the questions in the lesson. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless you all. Thank you for being a wonderful family. Because I always say, when I teach people, I always say, we are not a class. We are a family. And we've been a three, Saturday, three Saturdays family. 
and I could feel every Saturday, I could feel the love, I could feel the mercy, I could feel the good, goodness and good vibes and atmosphere when we used to gather here. May Allah always keep us good. Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Who is going for Hajj this year? One, two, three, who are all? Can I ask the Hujaj who's leaving just to come stand in front by me? We all make a special dua for you. Come. Come. Come forward, come stand in front. And while the Hujaj make their way to the front, I want to say a very big shukran, first and foremost to Brother Anwar Umar, who is our technician and who set up here for us every week. Also for Brother Siraj Parker, who is currently in India. He will be coming back in the week, inshallah. And all our support staff and team may Allah richly re richly reward you and bless you Haji Anwar Umar for the sterling work that you are always doing for Masjid al -Quds. may Allah bless you and your family Amen. come stand here come closer MashaAllah we are so blessed look at this Hujaj you are going to be, as the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Al Hujaj Wal Umar Wafdullah. That every person who go for Hajj and Umrah, you are the guest of Allah. You are not going to be the guest of the king. You are not going to be the guest of Sahuk or anyone. You are going to be the guest of the King of Kings. Allahu Rabbul Alameen. Out of the seven and more billion people that walk on earth, Allah has chosen every one of you to come as his guest. We are so honored, so honored to have you and to bid you farewell. We'll now make dua that Allah keep you all safe. Amen. And all of us who have the niyyah, inshallah, Allah must call all of us either next year or the following year when Allah calls us as long as Allah calls us before Allah take us away from this world. I'm going to ask the Hujaj individually just come up, say your name, surname and address but don't say when you're going otherwise we're all going to come there. <laughs> just come up, say your name, surname, address and if you want to say what date you leave, just that. Don't say that long, because we want to give everyone a chance, just for the barakah, that we get your barakah. Let's start here. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ismail Ashim. Okay. I'm staying at 32 Merton Road, leaving on the 8th of June, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Kasim Said. Uh, we're leaving on the 18th of June, inshallah. Shukhir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Burhan Amdulay. Uh, my wife and I are living on the 18th of June. Uh, we stay in the age meet. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ibrahim Hendrix. And I live in the 13th of June, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Walid Yan. And we're living on the 13th of June, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Yahsan Kasim, living on the 13th of June, inshallah. Address 17 Niger Close, Mitchell's Plain, Portland. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Abdul Muttalib Charles. We're living on the 13th. Uh, I'm staying 13, Mentoy, Strand, Fontaine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ibrahim Hendrix. But then I live in on the eight almost but okay okay stay in Menenberg or Gitsa Wood Park. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. My name is Karima Adams. I'm leaving the 12th of June. 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Name is Ruwaida Said. We living the 18th June, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Zaidunisa Kabalka, and we living on the 13th of June, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Rashida Wolska. I'm from Pontio. I'm living on the 8th of June. Allah speaks us. May Allah bless you and grant all of you who make near. You must just have the faith and the yaqeen and believe that Allah is going to grant you with Allah, what Allah has granted us with the khats. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Wahida Wetna and I'm living on the 8th of June, inshallah. Amen. Amen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Razi Hashim and I'm leaving on the 8th of June. Amen. Amen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Shama Yon. I'm leaving on the 13th of June, inshallah. My address is 48 Alberton Street, Portland. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Naim Naima Kasim, living on the 13th of June, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Rafika Amdulay. I'm from Age Meet, and we are leaving on the 18th of June, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Khafsa Chant. We're leaving on the 13th of June, inshallah. We stay number 13, Main Tower in Strandfontein. Um, um. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Fatima Basir and we're leaving on the 13th of June. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abash Abdurrahman. We'll be leaving on the 13th, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Um, my name is Roshan Bully. This is my sister Firoza Yang. Um, we're both leaving on the 13th of June, inshallah. Address for Barbados, close Manenberg Grant. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Viroza Young. I live at um, 35 Groot Kopro in Menenberg, and we are leaving on the 13th of June, inshallah, amin. Amin, ya rabbal alameen. Well now, just stand together, come closer. Can we all stand for a short salawat and then we make the dua, inshallah. Ya Rasul Rasul Allah Ya
السلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رحمة للعالمين تقول حجاج we make dua come stand closer even if you stand double line yeah. come come stand closer and stand closer we ask all our hujaj that Allah grant you salama travel Amen. And please, when you get to Medina, to Manawara, convey our love and salams to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Spend your time beautiful in Medina, inshallah. And when you go to Makkah and you see the Kaaba for the first time, and whenever you make tawaf and you make dua, please keep all of us in your dua. Say to Allah, Oh Allah, make dua. For my Saturday afternoon family here at Masjid Al-Quds, grant all of them the honor also to come and make the Hajj, okay. inshallah. Al-Fatiha. Before we make dua, I want you all to get that feeling of the Hajj. Let us all bring the Labbaik, inshallah. Labbaik, Allahumma Labbaik. Labbaik, la sharik laka Labbaik. إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allahumma aktubi salamata wa sihata wal afiyata alayna wa li abidika al hujjaj wa zawar wal musafirin wal murabitin wal muqimin fi barrika wa bahrika wa jawika min ummati sayyidina muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya maulana ya rabbal alamin اللهم أوصلهم إلى مكة المكرمة وإلى المدينة المنورة سالمين غانمين منفرحين مستبشرين مع الصحة والعافية يا مولانا يا رب العالمين الله الله Allah ya Allah 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 Labbaik, 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 ya Allah Labbaik, 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 ya Allah Allahu, 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 Allah اجعل حجهم حجا مبرورا وسعيهم سعيا مشكورا وذنوبهم ذنوبا مغفورا وعملهم عملا صالحا مقبولا وتجارة لن تبور يا نور النور يا نور النور يا عالم ما في الصدور أخرجنا يا الله من الظلمات إلى النور ربنا تقبل كل واحد منا عمر وحج بيتك الحرام يا مولانا يا رب العالمين الله Allah Allah Ya Allah 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 Ya Allah 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 Oh Allah Oh Allah Allah Oh Allah Allah, Allah, Labbaik, 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 Ya Allah, Labbaik, 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 Ya Allah, 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 Allah. Allah 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 
نا النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه اللهم افتح لنا بالخير واختم لنا بالخير وجعل أواقب أمورنا بالخير بيدك الخير والعافية إنك على كل شيء قدير ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم زنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون بفضلك دعواهم فيا سبحانك اللهم وتحياتهم فيا سلام وآخر دعوة أمان الحمد لله رب العالمين In conclusion, I want to say to all of you I love you all for the sake of Allah May Allah keep us in His protection Ladies, greet the ladies and wish them well Gentlemen, greet the men and wish them well والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته No one will care for you like your parents will care for you at Annur Education Center, we give orphans a loving home, clothing, food, and education. Be the orphan's parent by sponsoring an orphan for 18,000 Rand or 1,500 Rand per month. Annur Education Center, a place where orphans call home. Imagine, imagine a world where each person has access to their basic rights. A world where everyone is equal. Imagine a world where each person will have an equal share in each single seed of wheat. Where each child has the freedom to learn. This Ramadan, we ask you to feed the fasting in 14 countries around the world with AMA. Provide an iftar box for 100 rand, a hamper for 1,500 rand, or feed a village for 15,000 rand. Donate today at Africa Muslims Agency and imagine the difference you can make. Please,